want you a gas lighting fool. You know goodwill Jasmine was not pop lock and dropping it on that pole. <laughs> What's going on, beautiful people? Baby, shout out to Huey. Honey, that was in my club days. You couldn't tell me nothing on a good Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. Hell, I was I was childless and, and out of college. But um, listen, y'all going to be honest with me on this episode. Y'all know damn well. Jasmine stiff ass was not was not on that pole the way she should have been on that pole y'all gonna stop playing with me on this episode listen welcome to the pretty girl j channel if you have a sense of humor please feel free to stay and while you're here hit that like button hit that subscribe button and again, my name is Carla. For those who rock with me every single week, welcome back, family. How are y'all? Gang, gang, gang. All right. And if you're good and you're okay and life is treating you good, I want you to hit the like button too, as well as subscribe. And y'all don't forget to hit the bell notification. All right. We are coming to an end of this Married at First Sight journey. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. You heard my cry, okay? Now, let me just say this. Before somebody asks, this right here, I got burned with the hot cup of soup at work, okay? There was a bad accident, little lady. Oh, you know, long story short, I was bumped and I had some hot chicken noodle soup with, with no soda on the side in my hands and yeah it flew in my face y'all so yes I have second degree burns but your girl is okay I'm gonna make it um this y'all know how burns go okay we're not children okay but I'm all right so let's move on to this episode what's our safe word uh Chris don't want it to be pineapples no more I'm going to say stress. She know that she do too much. She always on team too much. Okay? So, is pineapples the word to still use? I said, I could think of some more words besides pineapples that you can use, sis. Nicole seriously thinks that her personality can come off as intimidating. I said, hell no. More like annoying. Aries and Jasmine are in the bed. Um, They are talking about decision day which is approaching in you know less than a week like five days and Aries is telling her oh I see improvement now um if you could just continue to speak up for yourself and um speak over yourself um be encouraged you know he giving her a old gospel him um that this marriage might work out and he said, because I feel like when you speak up for yourself, that is, I'm getting the best version of yourself. What? Aries, I don't, I don't need your motivational speech. I don't. And especially, especially Negro, when you ain't even looking at her, why you trying to motivate the hell out of her and encourage her to be her best self? How about you look like this? He look like this. I'm also, I mean, you know, if you just you know, speak up for yourself because I feel like I'm getting the best self, you know, the best person with you. She looking dead at him like this. Dead at him. And he still looking down. I... Hassan. Hassan is one of the subscribers here. He's dear, near and dear to me. Hassan said, oh boy, might be on the spectrum. Hassan, I, I'm starting to believe. I'm starting to believe so, okay? I'm starting to believe. Now, Aries want Jasmine to initiate hand-holding. And he was like, I want you to, you know, just take my hand, grab my hand and hold it. He said, I mean, you, I mean, at the beginning, we started off kind of doing that, but we like fell off. So I want to get us back to that because you want me, you want me to be, you know, attracted to you, right? 
you know, you want this thing to grow between us. So you're going to have to start by, you know, initiating some hand holding and, you know, I'd appreciate that. Aries. Oh, okay. I'm going to get off Aries right now. I'm going to move on. Okay. I'm, I'm going to move on because honestly, Clint takes Hank to go get coffee in a pup cup and he got a better relationship with Hank the dog, which is Gina's dog, than he do Gina. And Gina, Juvederm looking ass, Botox filler having ass, gonna throw him under the bus. And I'ma tell y'all about it. One moment. Kirsten, do y'all got the same daddy? Like, the, 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 like Kirsten, meets with her brother at the restaurant to talk about the, the the marriage. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't see the resemblance. I don't. Do do he look like the daddy and she look like the mama? But wait a minute, we we met the mama this episode and I'll be damned when she don't look like she don't look like her mama either. So who is that girl daddy? I need to see the daddy. I would like to see the daddy because I don't see where she looked like the mama. And that boy, her brother, don't look like her or the mama. So I need to see the daddy. I need to see the daddy. Is that your play like brother? Did you get a did you hire that boy to come on here and play your brother? Because I, I just can't. I can't believe it. I didn't even see him at the wedding. Did y'all see him at the wedding? She meets with um <coughs> her brother. And he's like, so where do you see the marriage going? Okay. She says, you know, it's crazy because I don't, we don't talk. I said, wait a, wait a, hell no. Wait a damn minute, family. Wait a minute. Last week, correct me if I'm wrong, but damn it, acknowledge me when I'm right. Last week, your husband, Shaquille, Said that you keep his ass up to 2 and 3 a.m. When you know it's a work night for him. When you know he got to go punch the clock at 6.30 in the morning. You know he got to be at his job. You stay up talking. So what the hell are y'all talking about? Because you asking questions like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to live after decision day? Where is the marriage going? You're asking questions that your ass should have been asking why you kept him up want to talk and have these deep conversations what you what you was doing at 2 a.m what what's going on she says kirsten tells her brother i don't feel emotionally connected to shaquille okay but where she got me where she got me and i said oh she said and to be honest i don't feel physically connected to him i said oh so y'all have been having sex since i'm gonna say before y'all allowed us to see the intimacy y'all have been having sex i'm gonna say the honeymoon you guys have been having sex since the honeymoon the day he he was he was dirty grinding and dancing with the instructor you caught a little itch and y'all been y'all been at it since then now you're not physically or emotionally connected okay and um he, she says it's just not enough touching it's just not enough connection okay i can kind of see that i can't so the brother says <clears throat> so i mean are you trying to see when you know how this thing gonna work before you bring him around the family because you know I we work you know we work so you gonna have to plan some if you want us to you know meet him and you know to be around him and he was like that have daddy met him and she was like no nah, you know how daddy is he was like oh oh daddy before you bring him around daddy you better make sure because daddy is the judge the jury and the prosecutor Daddy don't play no games. I'm telling you. So you better make sure before you bring him around. Okay. He was like, but I ain't going to be able to make it to the dinner party. Because I got to work. So we know Kirsten family work. And judging by that CNA outfit that 
the mama showed up in to eat dinner in her lap. Cursed the family. Family, was it, was it me? Or was Chris telling way too much of Nicole's business? Okay, it's one thing to discuss your marriage and your, you know, the growth or lack thereof in the marriage. But baby, what does her self-esteem and her, um, her, um, insecurities have to do with anything that is not your place to tell anybody anything okay he like he telling her yeah um you know nicole be doing the most and all that but you know what you know i just hate how insecure she can be in a marriage you know and i have to sometimes tell her like you know you're beautiful you're kind and you's important and shit you know build her confidence because she sometimes lack confidence in the marriage and i hate that talk about yourself and where you are at in the marriage chris i didn't like that don't don't be telling nobody my business your buddy how bad you was crying and shit over them dogs how about that? Oh, McKinley, you a fake ass friend. Y'all, McKinley is at the gym meeting Clint and he asking Clint about his potential girl. Let me tell y'all what McKinley doing. Now y'all know McKinley was here at the beginning of the season. He was married to, um, to, um, Dominique. He was married to Dominique and it didn't work out. Okay, McKinley is interested in Gina Botox filler having ass. Can y'all believe this shit? He in there talking about some, so tell me what's going on with Gina, you know? And he like, yeah, I, we just not, you know, Clint, Clint so naive, yeah, we're just not, you know, connected in that way. We just don't, you know, I don't find her physically attractive. Really, you don't say. Really? I don't see nothing wrong with her. What you what's wrong with her? Nothing. It's just nothing there, you know. I, I Clint is like, I there's nothing there. I just don't find her attractive. McKinley says that's surprising because I think Gina is just a wonderful girl. And you know what? Um, if you don't want her next week. I'm going to slide in her DMs. Because y'all already know. It goes down in the DMs. It go down. It go down in the DMs. It go down. It go down. Shaquille, you really, like, this, this week, this episode, you worked my last damn nerve. You really, really did. Shaquille talks to his friend Sherman. And... You know, Sherman is getting ready to have a baby and all that. He's like, Prince is on his way. And he's talking to him, uh, you know, via FaceTime, whatever, on the computer. Shaquille is saying mentally in his marriage, he's at a six or a seven. He is saying the same shit that Kirsten is saying. I don't know what we doing. I don't know what we doing. I'm, that's why I'm asking, what the hell are y'all sitting up talking about? What are y'all talking about? Trains, planes, and automobiles and shit? What are y'all talking about that late where y'all don't know what y'all, what's the common goal, what your marriage is looking like? Because it ain't, it ain't looking successful for neither one of you. Neither one of you. She's not in it or feeling you 100% and neither are you. He's saying it's hard for him because he's trying to balance work, life, and marriage. Again, Shaquille, why did you sign up, sign up for this show, sweetheart? Because in real life, that's what you're balancing all the time. And don't throw kids in it or elderly parents or sick parents or sick children. Don't throw other things in the mix. He tells his, his friend, you know, what's crazy is that I still haven't met her family. But she talks to mine. I put mine on speakerphone. And they talk and they, you know, say hi and all that. They talk to each other on the speakerphone. But I have yet to meet her daddy or talk to her family or anything. 
Um, he said, and you know, for me, I, 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 I want to have kids one day. I mean, honestly, can I see myself having kids with her and dropping my kids off to her family? Who says they want to, they want to babysit them bad ass kids? Who said they want to babysit baby's kids? Who said that? Now, Jasmine and Gina go pole dancing. Why? Why they go pole dancing, Carla? I'm going to tell you why. Because they want to be attractive to their mates. I said, to, let's be clear. Let's be very damn clear. Gina ass don't give a damn about being attracted or attractive for Clint. Because neither one of them find each other attractive. They friends. She could care less. She just wants to pop, lock, and drop it and show her ass on the pole show her show her footwork on the pole okay jasmine the one is going all out to to show Aries that she got that thing that she got that thong, the thong, thong, thong. but honey i'm gonna tell you something y'all better watch Aries. Aries got wonder i do y'all know and if you didn't catch it watch it back Aries comes through the through the studio he comes through the door and Jasmine and her stiff, cheerleading, Dallas cowboy looking ass, Tennessee Titan cheer looking ass. She on the pole and she ain't looking very limber. She not, she not shaking. The, the teacher telling her, pull up right here and shake it, shake it, shake it. She, her ass ain't moving. Gina ass moving. Jasmine ass ain't moving. Jasmine. She's spinning around the pole. I said, baby, just, just look sexy on the pole. Just drop her the pole. Just don't even try it. Just stop trying to shake. He walks through, and y'all, the first thing he looking at, the first thing he looking at, it's not Jasmine's ass, because they're on the floor popping. He looks at Gina like this, and then cut his eye over to Jasmine. Tell me I'm wrong. I said, look at this wandering out bastard. Look at his ass here. He ain't, he not, he don't give a shit. And then he gaslights her. So he goes sit down <coughs> and he's telling her, y'all, oh man, you good. Look, you, you know, I know you was a cheerleading. I said cheerleading and, and, um, and, and, and stripper dance, stripper pop, stripper shake is two different things. Okay. Two different things. He was like, yeah, I knew you could dance, but man, um, you doing good. And then he says, um, he says, man, look at you. We might need to get a pole in the house because, man, I like that. I like what I'm seeing. Why are you gaslighting her ass? She did poorly on that pole, okay? She, no, no, I don't care what y'all say. And y'all know, I know y'all going to be in the comment section like, Carla, she did all right. Her ass went around the pole and didn't shake shit. Okay? Didn't shake shit. Okay? You better chi you better you better channel your black china. Okay? You better channel your GG Maguire. You better come on, you better you better channel Hello somebody. Shaquille, shut your ass up. Shaquille is talking to Kirsten. Kirsten tells Shaquille, we're, I'm going to have a dinner party and, um, you know, so you can meet some of the family. Shaquille says, instead of him saying, oh, great, I can't wait to meet your family and leaving it alone. Oh, no, 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 no. This bald head ass boy going to say, okay, so like, what's taking them so long? Like, they not curious about your marriage. No, they mind their damn business and go to work. What the hell is your family doing? Sitting there eating crawfish? So I'm just trying to figure out what took them so long. Like, is it because you want, you're unsure of the marriage or because they're that busy? Because I just feel like people make time for what's important to them. Your, look, look, let me, look, I'm gonna say this nice as I can. Your motherfucking marriage is not a priority for anybody in her family and it really shouldn't be okay they are letting this girl live her life 
all right? And you should be living yours. You should not be worried about meeting her family until she, y'all, she ready, okay? But since you so busy trying to come down on her about meeting her family, what did she say to you? Well, Shaquille, they work. So this is the best time that they can come. They, they work, okay? So my mama gonna come and, 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 and that's where it's gonna be because my brother can't come, he at work. Okay, can't get off. He ain't got no PTO days or none in his bank. Okay, because she started complaining. She said, you know, Shaquille, you act like you don't even want me. You act like you don't want to be in this marriage. You come through the door and you don't greet me. You don't, there's no hug, no kiss, no nothing. And then they roll the tape. And day 10, he walks through the door, walks past her ass. And she's like, hey, did you want some salmon and rice? I cooked. He like, no, thank you. I'm good. Okay. Day seven, he do the same shit. Seven days ago, he do the same shit. Two days ago, he's sitting there at the counter, y'all. Sitting there on his phone, and she's sitting next to him, and he ain't saying shit to her. His ass gonna say, I didn't know it was an issue. I didn't know it was a concern. To walk through the house like that? Shaquille, to walk through an apartment that your wife is in and not come through the door like Kirsten, baby, hey, hug, kiss, how was your day? Now that I know it's a problem, I mean, I, 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 I'll fix it. What? How long do you think a woman was going to allow you to walk through the door and not say nothing to her before she stopped walking through the door, period? Jasmine and Aries, I can't even take y'all serious in the bedroom. They in the bedroom trying out blindfolds and handcuffs and I can't even take them seriously. Do you hear me? You know what I, I have found in this whole scene? Aries wants to be dominated. Aries wants a woman who is assertive in in. She's a lady, but in that bedroom, she is assertive and she can handle him. And she, you know, she puts her foot down on what she wants. That's not, Jasmine is not that girl. Jasmine, I don't know if it's the PK, the preacher's kid in her. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what it is, but the girl doesn't speak up for herself in life and she is not assertive in the bedroom. Aries want her to slap him. I said, Aries, let me find out you like to be choked. Aries, let me find out you went to the, 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 the what's it called, the s and the, let me find out you went to that bondage and stuff because Aries was like, slap me. And she slapped him. He was like, see, that ain't hard to slap me. And she slapped and she, he was like, okay, you getting better at it. What? What did I just want? Nicole called her daddy and asked her daddy his thoughts on her marriage. And I'm like, I don't understand. If these people ain't been there, if they, they ain't chimed in, in the midst of it, what they chiming in for now. But okay. The daddy said, well, he ain't no serial killer. So if you like him, I love him. Go ahead and have him. Um... Gina says, hey, little boy, hey, Clint, it's time that you stop watching YouTube videos and DIYing your hair. Let me, let me show you. Let me, let me go ahead and get you a, a good haircut so you can stop looking like Jesus and look more like Bradley Cooper. Okay. So she take him to go get a haircut and she says, oh, now you're looking good. I said, to be honest, I kind of. I didn't like that slick back shit. That shit looked like bank robber to me. Lord, why they playing in our faces? These fools get dressed to go to church. Shaquille and Kirsten go to church. Playing in our face. Talking about some fix it, Lord. Fix it. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Baby, they was playing. Okay, they was playing. They didn't went to church and not a whole. You mean to tell me, sister, sister, uh, ponytail, sister Beulah, you, you, where the church members at? Where's the pastor? Pastor Cal is, is failing. Where's the real pastor of that church? 
with that old school wood. Where's the pastor of that real church that can talk to them for real? Because they sitting in an empty church. And I know damn well somebody is at that church. Because if you ever been to a black church, I asses don't never go home. This far of the episode, baby, I holler. Y'all, Jasmine says, come on, Aries. Let's go see a damn meal. Have you ever got a ring? Aries said, no. I said, oh, oh, Lord. I said, oh, get, I said, get the Tyler. Go get Tyler, Lord. This lady says, she, they sit down, the lady says, write your name. Write your name on the paper. Baby, they get the right name on the paper. They get the right name. Jasmine Aries. Oh, she says, looking at the energy of your handwriting. Aries, the energy of your handwriting is confusing. You're confused about a lot of things in your life. Okay, and Jasmine, Jasmine, looking at how you write your letter J, your handwriting is strong. J is strong, but you fear so much. I said, get the hell out of here. Now, y'all, in order for them to film this medium, they have had to get permission, which means she know why they there and what the show is about. Y'all stop playing in my damn face with this. This geechy geechy stuff. Stop it. Your spirit. You know, I feel a spirit um, of you being guarding. And um, this man, Aries, that's sitting next to you. Um, I want you to know he wishes you well. He damn sure do. Bye-bye. He wishes you he wishes you so much success. But baby, it ain't with him. So the media continues. Um, Aries, uh uh, what do I have to say about you? Um, I see a woman. I see a woman holding a little childish ass kid's hand, telling him don't touch her damn hot ass stove no more. Who is that woman? Who is that? He said, My grandma. My grandma, okay, well, your grandma's telling me she like Jasmine and she wants y'all to have some babies and she wants you to grow your ass up because you have an old soul. I said, I don't get that old soul. Not median, I don't, old soul where? Where? Okay. Then she says, um, Holy Spirit, activate, activate, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Jasmine, this man you're attracted to? He is very immature, very, but his heart is good. His heart is good, but he's so damn immature. He is. And you know, y'all both have high energy. You both have high energy, but you're uncomfortable with each other. You're uncomfortable, but I see good things happening for you in the future. I really, really do. Y'all, when I tell you this media was playing games in our damn faces, baby, I, I was laughing. I was laughing my ass off because she like, mm-hmm, yeah, because cause I was I was very reluctant, and I am. I'm scared to put all my eggs in the basket and, and not work out. Yeah, I am, so I am fearful. You are right about that. I said, this woman ain't tell y'all shit that y'all didn't already know about yourself. Aries know he immature. Kristen mama gets to, 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 the, to the house, y'all. Looking like Nurse Betty. She came through with her scrubs on her black scrubs. You know, her her her, her old braids. And she was like, y'all ain't got no TV trays. They ain't had no TV trays for mama to sit at. They just, mama just, mama just sitting there with her food in her lap. <laughs> and just them got, they, they got, they got napkins and shit on their lap. They just sitting there eating. I said, they at least invest in some TV trays in this little part, which I got for Jesus. So mama sitting there eating. Mama says, how's the marriage going? How mama says, how's the marriage? How is the marriage going? Okay, Kirsten tears our mama and Shaquille. Um, I, I just don't know. I don't want to just be existing in this marriage. I want it to thrive and um I, I just don't know where we stand. It's kind of hard. So mama said, okay. She let her talk. Then she said words of wisdom. And I loved, I love what the mom said. I do. She said words of wisdom. Let the expectations go. 
she said he ain't gonna look do say everything in the way you want him to look do say she's not going to look do say in the way you want her to it is not going to happen if you are expecting something from each other it won't ever happen the way you want it to happen let the expectations go she said start living and stop expecting and i said that's those words are mama now pastor kelly juicy face show up at the end of the season to check on gina and clint i said what in the hell juicy face hello 36 pieces quick weave hell weave killer show up and she getting back she asked Gina and Clint, hey, how's everything going? I'm here to check on you, okay? So, did you guys do the exercises I told you about? Gina said, um, she looks at Clint. Clint says, I mean, we've been getting pretty, pretty close. We're okay, you know, it, it's, it's friendly vibes. She said, I told you guys to watch a movie and shit. Did you watch the movie? Did you watch a movie? No, nah, we ain't watch. We ain't watch no movies. No, nah, we ain't have time for that shit. No, nah. we ain't watch the movie. She said, "Well, what? Well, why am I here? What did I come? Why did I come last week and tell you guys to do these things if you're not gonna do them?" See, I know damn well you ain't got an attitude. I know, Doctor Pepper. You don't have an attitude about them not doing what you told them to do at the end of the game. You got your damn nerve. They are not attracted to each other. And if they keep telling y'all this and y'all not listening, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. So Gina chimes in. She says, I'm sorry. My feelings still have not progressed. We on a friendship level. Ain't nothing moving between us. We don't see each other in that capacity so basically you're telling us and, and and they're basically telling you experts, we will not be saying yes on decision day. We will be saying no and going our ways, our own respective ways and meeting and dating other people. They basically told us they're done. They, they tried to be friends and that's all they're giving. Okay, they're not attracted to each other. I don't know why Dr. Pepper and Pastor Cal are not listening, but they're pissing me off this season because they have not been listening. So Dr. Pepper says, so, okay, can I ask, what was all the, the touching and kissing about on your wedding day? Did this bitch really just ask that she, did she just ask, what was that all about? I said, for sure. For sure. Clint said, I mean, that's what people do when they get married. It's expected of them to hug, kiss, dance, and show some sign of affection. We were just putting on for the cameras and, you know, for the show. I ain't feeling her. She ain't feeling me. Okay? We did what we did because people expected us to do these things at the wedding. Dr. Pepper then says to them, so were you doing these things for an expectation? Are you okay? Dr. Dr. Juicy Face, hello. Are you okay? He just told you why they did what they did for clicks and giggles and all. Oh, they seem to like each other. They did it for the show. They did it for the expectation that people want to see at a wedding. Why are you asking that dumbass question is beyond me. Pastor Cal looks at them like this. You know, now he missing the ball. You know, I see you two sitting together on the couch. You guys look comfortable. How How is the chemistry going? I was like, Yo, neither one of them are listening to them. I, I'm hearing clearly what they are saying. What Pastor Cal asked them was, so 
what you want out of life is not compatible. Is that what you're saying? That they, they, That's basically what they're saying. They just ain't saying it the way you want them to say it. They're saying it in a around the world type of way. They're saying, no, we have some commonalities. You know, Clint kept saying that we have some commonalities, but I, yeah, we just don't see it for each other. But I'm going to tell you how his feelings got hurt. And he felt, he felt bamboozled. He felt like he was thrown under the bus by Gina. Gina starts to say, we have no physical attraction. He was cool with her saying that because it's true. But then he says, you know, that like he's the life of the party and he's weird and quirky. And you know, that might work for some people, but it's just something I'm not attracted to. And then he says, it's like, I got secondhand embarrassment. He was like, oh, oh, okay. Basically, this is another time. Gina, you could have kept your damn opinions to yourself. Secondhand embarrassment because of his personality. He's just weird and I call it secondhand embarrassment. Mm, I, I'll admit that I haven't, you know, I cook. She said, yeah, you cook, you cook for yourself. You don't cook or make a special meal because I am your wife and you intentionally want me to have a meal that I love. You're cooking because your ass is hungry. And he was like, well, I agree. I mean, I, I haven't been perfect in this. I, you know, I haven't always been intentional in in, in the marriage and in, in viewing you as a wife. But see, Clint was still hung up on the fact that she got secondhand embarrassment from him. And she that's where he, he felt like, you ain't told me that, but you're going to get on TV in front of these experts and tell them that you embarrassed by my ass and you don't want my ass. Oh, okay. Okay. And says, hmm, I just felt like she just sidelined me. You know, I like, what did I do to her? Like, I'm embarrassing for her. And and he was like, I just, you know, I just, I'm sorry. I just can't get past what she just did to me. And I'm like, okay, she did it. Now what? That was the end of the episode. You guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and all this foolishness. I'm done. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are about the episode. Woo! Child, I just, I think we got like two or three more episodes until decision day. I'm looking forward to it, all right? I'll see you guys very, very soon. Don't forget to drop your comments below on what you thought of this episode or the characters in this episode, okay? I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Gang, gang, gang.